Hi, welcome to Edu Solutions Institute. So every week we'll be doing different videos for the syllabus for CSEC physics. So we'll start today with measurement. Now, measurement, we need to know when we measure something, what exactly are we doing? Right? So measurement is comparing two things. We don't know the quantity, and by quantity I mean the size of what you're measuring and we're going to compare it to something that we know and something that we know is the instrument the scales on the instrument which has a unit so measurement is a comparison of the unknown quantity with the known standard unit so if i say let's measure the marker the length of the marker we use an appropriate instrument which is the ruler to compare the units on the ruler to see how much the length of the pen is. Now, measurement comes in physics is very important, right? Because it also identifies the quantities that we utilize in physics. Now, in physics, we will first talk about quantities called fundamental quantities. And these are the basic quantities that exist. So these quantities are the foundation in which all other quantities come from. Now, at CSEC level, we focus on the five main ones. But in total, there are seven. So let's focus on the five main ones. So in our column here, we're going to have the quantity. Then each quantity has a different symbol. And then for each quantity, there is what we call the SI unit. And then we have the unit symbol. Now SI unit means it's a standard system that is recognized throughout all the scientific world, that this quantity has this specific unit, right? So let's go with the first one we're going to look at is time. And time as a symbol of a common T. Its SI unit is seconds, and it's a common S, right? We go with another T1, temperature. This one is a capital T, its SI unit is Kelvin and also degree Celsius. Right? So for Kelvin, it's a capital K. And then for degree Celsius is the degrees with, the cap with a C. Now, it's capital K because it's named after a scientist. Next one is mass. And mass is a common M which is SI unit is the meter and R is a kilogram and it's symbol common K and G. We have length, which is common L measured in meter. The symbol is a common M. And finally, we have electric current which symbol is a capital i unit is the ampere and the symbol for ampere is a capital a so these are the five fundamental quantities <coughs> that we'll utilize throughout all physics lessons as well as all science lessons as well now notice that each quantity symbol is unique to that specific quantity. So no two quantities will have the same symbol under a specific topic. And also the symbols for their units are unique as well. All right, so please pay attention to the, the case as well. Notice this is a common T which represents time. If you use capital T, that represents temperature. For units, 
common M or meters, not a capital M. Right? Amperes is capital A, not a common A. Right? So these are the units that we will use re frequently in our classes. The next type of quantities are called derived quantities. These are every other quantities that's not listed above. So they are taken from two or more base quantities. All right? So example, area, volume, speed, acceleration and the list continues so throughout our classes we'll be focusing a lot on these derived quantities and we'll have different sessions with most of them right so these are the quantities that exist in physics so when we measure things these are the things that we're measuring right so we know the instrument used to measure time would be a stopwatch right so we use a stopwatch to measure time. Uniquely for temperature would be a thermometer. And for mass, we know persons normally call this a scale. So the correct term is a balance. The scales are the markings on the instruments. So for mass, we use a balance to record the value. Then we have length, use a ruler and finally electric current we use an ammeter all right so these derived quantities will have their also instruments that measures it but for this purpose we only focus a lot on our fundamental and what devices or instruments we use to measure them all right now let's move on to looking more into depth of our measurement. All right, so with measurement, we are required to know two instruments that's used to measure some form of length or distance. These instruments are the vernier caliper as well as the micrometer screw gauge now both are used to measure thickness of objects but for the vernier caliper which you're seeing here it's used to measure thickness or diameter of bigger objects but for the micrometer that you're seeing here notice its size is very small it's used to measure minute thickness such as hair strands coin thickness of the paper so those small things we use a micrometer for vernier caliper is used for the bigger things now why do we need these instruments because let's say i want to know what's the thickness of this marker if we use a ruler we would have to estimate because the curved surface makes it hard for a ruler to measure it accurately so we use these instruments to give us accurate readings because it gives us not an estimated value but an actual value so let's look at each individually so for a mike vernier caliper how do we read it now the vernier caliper has two parts to it it has a main scale part that has a scale on it right and then below it we have a smaller scale which is called the vernier scale now the vernier scale purpose is to give us the more accurate reading part All right so let's see how this works so this part is your main scale and this part is your vernier scale so in reading, very easy to do, right? We take our main scale reading, call it MS, and we say 
we're looking at the vernier scale zero which is right here and we're going to make a dotted line upwards and we're going to take the number that is to the left of this dotted line so if this is zero this is one that means this number is one zero point one so therefore our main scale reading here is zero point one right so we know that this object lies between zero point one and zero point two so we need to know exactly what this number is. And that's where we use the vernier scale. Call it Vs. So the vernier scale now, we're looking down these scales right here and see which one is in line with one of these lines up here. So if we look at the first zero, it's not in line with the next line. This one, no, 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 no. This one is in line. And this line is the fifth line. So therefore, if this is the fifth line, then that means our reading would be that it is 0 0.15. And this is in centimeters. Right? So again, our mean scale, we take a dotted line from our vernier scale 0 upwards, and we take the reading to the left of it. Right? Now, that reading would be your main scale reading. We need to know what comes after that last number on your main scale. So we look at the vernier scale and see which line is in line from the vernier scale to the main scale. And in this case, this line matches this line. So this is the fifth line, one, two, three, four, five. So therefore, its answer is 0 0.15 centimeters. Right. Now let's look at the micrometer. All right. So with the micrometer screw gauge, the scales look just like this. Now we have two parts just like the vernier, but this one is called the sleeve and this is called the thimble. So our first part is to get what our sleeve reading is. Now your sleeve notice has two scales right top part here and a bottom part the bottom part of the sleeve are values of 0 0.5 so if we say this is 0 this is 0 0.5 this is 1 1.5 2 2.5 3 and it continues like that all right so what we do is to look at the last line here where it cuts it right here and see which line is to the immediate left of it, which is this one. So what's the value of that one? This is 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is 9.5. So our sleeve reading is 9.5. All right. Then we go to our thimble. And we say for our thimble, we need to look at which line is in line with that middle line from our sleeve. And we notice that this line right here is in line with it. And this is 0, this is 10, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. All right? So this is our fourth line. And what we do here is to divide this 4 by 100. It's 0 0.04. And therefore, our final reading here would be that we add 9.5 plus 0 0.04. That gives us 9.54, and it's normally in a unit of millimeters. So again, we use our sleeve reading, where this line cuts, we take the reading to the left of it, if it's not on a line. If it's on, perfectly on a line, then we use that line value. But for this, it's not on a line, so the first line from it is this one, which is 6, seven eight nine and nine and a half so nine and a half then for the timber reading we take the one that's in line with this middle line from our sleeve which is one two three fourth one divide the four by a hundred because we need the hundredth place all right so we get 0 0.04 we add both numbers to give us our final reading from our micrometer this is the end of today's session. Hope it was enjoyable. 
Now I would post it a video right here, right? A picture right here, sorry. So you can actually try an example of reading the micrometer and the vernier caliper. So once you get your answers, put those comments in the chat and I'll confirm with you next week if your answers are correct. Thank you and see you next week.